Hey everybody, it's finally time to get hands on and have some fun. In this video, we're going to be walking you through how we build one of our favorite shoe designs. But please just keep in mind along the way that you can build yours however you'd like. So get creative as long as it works, it fits, and there's a technological application to it. Or maybe you could attach a microprocessor to it. So the very first step, friends, is to get your designs and ideas down on paper. But before you do, do you think you could quickly pause this video and have a chat with your classmates or friends and ask yourself, what are some things that shoe designers in the real world need to keep in mind as they're working in order for their shoes to actually be applicable and work for the people who are wearing them? Exactly, I'm sure you've had all kinds of great answers, but shoes are no good and no use if they don't fit, they're not comfortable. If you can't get them on or off easily, they're not durable, they're too heavy, they don't have enough traction, and all kinds of other things. Now we're about to get started, but to make sure we do so on the right foot, just keep some of these things in mind as you take a look at these materials that you're going to be given. And really think about the best use case or scenario for each one of these materials and where they fit in your individual shoe idea. You by no means have to use all these, but they are available to you if you see a good fit in your design. So the very first step is to take one of those cardboard sheets, step on it, and trace the outside of your shoe. You could take your sock off, but if we are making a shoe, might as well model it after a life-size one. Of course, then we can cut it out and start to build from the ground up from there. We do know that cutting cardboard can be tough, friends, so just try to take it step by step, and you can always cut pieces off from the side in order to start new again. One huge rule of thumb for this project, friends, is if you're debating cutting more versus less, always go with more, because you can always trim it to get it to your right size, but if you cut it too small, it makes it very hard to add more fabric or material to it. So what you're seeing now is the cushioning of your shoe. We give you materials like cotton balls, adhesive foam, and sponges to make your shoe nice and comfy. Experiment with what materials might work best for your design and try to make your shoe something that your foot will thank you for when you put it on. What we're focusing on now, friends, is called the sole of the shoe. And that's typically about a half an inch to an inch and a half long. So we cut something right in the middle of that and we cut it into individual strips. You can even curve the chipboard a little bit in order to form to the design of your foot. And that makes it a little bit easier for the tape or the hot glue to mount it on there. And if you look hard enough and use your imagination, it's actually starting to look a little bit like a shoe. But now is the fun part, friends. And this is where we're going to really call on you to think like engineers and try to be creative and maybe fail once or twice. But we know you got this. This is called pattern making, and it's not exactly easy to take a 2D design and what you cut out on paper and make it into something that comes to life in 3D and forms around your foot. Remember, we're modeling this after this sort of shoe. You can make yours however you'd like, but if you look here, you see that this has two main parts. Mainly is the one that wraps around the heel and comes to the start of your toes, and then there's the part on the front that goes over your toes, around your toes, and into the tongue. Next up, you obviously want to cut this piece out and see if it fits. Go ahead and wiggle it in there before officially gluing it in, in case you need to make any adjustments. If it feels all good and how you intended, then you're good to go to either glue or tape it in. Then we can move on to focusing on the other half of the shoe, which covers the very front part of the foot and goes all the way up to the tongue. Get the pencil or marker back out because again, you're going to want to trace where we're gonna cut. But remember friends, another huge rule of thumb is we're making this from 2D to 3D. So make it a little bit bigger so we can account for the curve of the foot and have it wrap around it, which takes a little bit extra space. Depending on the shape of your foot and how exactly you want to style the shoe, if you even go this route, this one kind of looks like a mushroom or a ping pong paddle or something. So strengthen it up a little bit and put some finishing touches on it like this round tongue versus a square tongue. But we will see you in the next video where we're going to show you how to lace it up and test it out. And one last quick note, friends, is that pattern process looks different for every type of shoe. So take a look at some of these and how they might differ from what we just made.